A slim park? Today, we are talking about a couple of different ways that you can use the Slimpar Pro H. This light is most commonly used for uplighting or stage washes. We're going to cover the different models of this light, basic color mixing, as well as showing you how to navigate the preset colors and finally go over the DeFi wireless system. First off, there are a lot of different Slimpars to choose from. Uh, well, we're not going to get into that, what we are going to talk about is how to differentiate the different types of models based on the title. So the first thing that we want to look at is the number of chips within the unit for color control. So first up, we have W for white, which is a, a two color white, and then we have the tri for three colors, quad for four, and lastly the hex for six colors. Um, the next thing that we want to look at is the number of lenses on the light, um, and that can range anywhere from 3 to 6 to 12, uh, depending on the fixture. And the last thing that we want to look at for the title is the specialty of the unit. We have BT for Bluetooth, IRC for the infrared remote control, and USB for Chavez's proprietary wireless DMX system. So, this fixture we can tell because it's a Slimpar Pro H USB. Uh, it's set up for six colors in the hex configuration. Um, you can see that we've got 12 lenses on the front and the USB tells us that it is equipped to be able to work with Chavez's wireless DMX system. When you order your brand new Chave Slimpar Pro H USB, it will arrive out of the box with three things. You will receive your fixture, uh, you will receive a PowerCon to Edison cable, typically called a whip or a pigtail, and you will also receive a gel frame, which screws onto the front of the fixture like so. Um, typically, we don't use uh, frames in our application because it is a color-changing LED unit. Um, if you do find yourself in a pinch uh, needing to diffuse the light or something like that though, I found that gaff tape also works as a very nice gel holder. On the back of the fixture, uh, we can see that here are your two power plugs, right? This is a power con connection. So we have blue for in and white for out. And what that means is that you can daisy chain up to eight of these fixtures together for power linkage, right? They draw 1.4 amps a piece. So that puts us at eight fixtures total at 120 volts. Um, for data, this bad boy receives and transmits everything through three pin DMX, uh, located just to the side here. They're the plugs with the three pins. And then up top and center here, you have your screen, which will display all the information you need for navigating the menu, setting the light, all of that stuff. Um, and then just below that, you have your four buttons um, to be able to navigate said menu and your microphone is up here as well. The first thing that we're going to talk about is establishing DMX control. So once we get the fixture plugged in, it will go ahead and power up uh, into whatever mode you had it last operating in. For us, it's already in DMX mode and you can see that it defaulted uh, to show us the address of the fixture we're in. So the first step we want to take for this uh, is to set the number of channels or the mode that the unit is operating in. Uh, for this one, we have three choices. We have six channel mode, seven channel mode, and 12 channel mode. So the way that we get there from this dimmer screen or from wherever else you might be in the fixture is you simply press menu until you arrive at this screen right here, and that'll tell you six channel, indicating that the light is ready to go into six channel mode. Uh, you press menu again, scroll forward to seven channel, and then to 12 channel. What this does is the different amounts of channels that you use for the fixture uh, give you different amounts of fine control over the unit for color mixing and intensity and so forth. It's also a way to manage the footprint uh, for your lighting rig on your board as well. Uh, when you find the mode that you like, uh, go ahead and press enter to confirm that into the fixture. And then it will take you to this dimmer screen to confirm the address for the unit, uh, where again, you use the up down buttons to confirm the address you would like, and then press enter to lock it into the unit. The next mode that I want to talk about is the preset color mode. 
uh, you reach this by pressing the menu button and scrolling until the screen reads C, like so. And then you press enter to select that mode and then you can use the up and down buttons uh, to scroll through the different presets. There are 63 of them that come with this light. I'm just gonna demo some on my arm here. This is very useful for things like weddings or corporate events or other situations that do have a preset color scheme uh, where you don't necessarily have the ability or the need to run DMX cables out to every fixture. Um, you can just set and forget. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of different options and they all look fantastic on my plaid shirt. The next preset mode I want to talk about is personalities. To get there, you simply press the menu button again until the screen reads P. It's also the one after C, so here we are, and you hit enter to select that mode, and you have four options to choose from out of your presets. Uh, once you have one of the four, we're on number four right now, once you have the one that you like selected, then you can go ahead and set the speed uh, for your preset cycle as well. Uh, right now, we're operating at 50%. So, to set your speed, uh, once again, you come over to the menu button here on the fixture and press it until it reads S, and then you use your up and down, don't hit enter, just go to S and then up and down to be able to control your speed. So now we're up from 50 to 80, and enter to confirm that, and you can see it scrolling through. And once again, much like the static colors, uh, this is also useful for typically uplighting, but also events where you don't necessarily need or want to run DMX to all your fixtures. Uh, you can just create a nice, easy moving pattern uh, and just set and forget your units. The next mode of lighting I wanna talk about starts to fall into the DJ realm of lighting. So one of the features that we have on this fixture is sound active mode, which means that it enables the microphone here and the light will change between static colors and presets uh, depending on changes in music, noise, whatever around it. So to get to sound active mode, you come back over to this lovely menu button here, scroll through until the screen reads SND for sound, press enter, and then you have two options for sound mode. Uh, sound one scrolls through six different colors. Sound two does 32. So you pick the one you would like and press enter to activate that mode. And you can see it begin to change there. Uh, you can also change the sensitivity of the mic by pressing menu again. So it says sense and then using the up or down uh, to be able to change the sensitivity which is denoted by this U here, um, between one and 100, with 100 being the most sensitive. You can see it even here, just responding to the different tones in my voice. The next mode I would like to talk about is the user setting mode. Uh, this allows you to create any customized color that you would like from the fixture. Uh, it does this by allowing you direct access to the uh, six hex colors in the unit, right that would be red green blue amber white and uv um, rgb awp this is opposed to the preset uh, static colors that we had talked about before so instead of selecting from pre-made colors you are literally changing the value of each individual hex within the fixture to get what you're looking for um, and these values range from zero being zero to 255 being full. So the way you access this mode is you come over to your lovely menu button again and press it until the screen reads U and then you select enter. And you can see that it reads G255 on the screen here, uh, which stands for green 255, which would be full. The light starts at white with everything at full, and then you trim those individual values down to get the correct color you want. Uh, this is very useful if you're doing set and forget events um, where the client has a very specific color or set of colors that they would like you to use. Typically in situations like that, 
uh, they will go ahead and give you an RGB value uh, for the unit that you can then just directly input into your fixtures. Uh, there are also websites if you're struggling to find a color, such as htmlcolorcode.com, uh, that you can use to track down the color you're looking for, and they will also provide you with an RGB mix as well. To change these on the actual unit, you use your menu button and you scroll through until you find what you're looking for, right? The letter and then the number. So we can see G255. We could change that if we wanted with our up and down buttons. And then press enter to scroll to the next one, right? Blue, amber, U for white, and P for UV. And then we can go through and edit those values accordingly. The important thing, again, is to not forget to press enter after each time you set a value for one of the hex colors to make sure that it stays locked into the fixture. The next setting on this fixture is the dimmer curve setting. This allows you to set a dimmer curve for the unit, uh, which means that it will mimic the pathway that conventional lights follow uh, for changes in intensity. It'll typically start at lower intensities with warmer colors and progress through to cooler colors as intensity comes up or you change colors in the fixture. Uh, to access this, you go over here to your lovely menu button and press it until the screen reads dim and then select enter. So we have four options here in this menu, the first of which is off, and then you can use the up and down to scroll through dimmers one, two, and three. Dimmer one is the fastest or steepest curve on the unit, and then they slow down progressively from there. So what this does is it enables you to have a gentler effect with your light when you're changing intensity or color, um, and it'll help it blend in more uh, with conventional units on your rig if you have those. The next setting for this fixture is the SER setting, which enables the use of the remote. Um, this is the Chave DJ Line uh, remote that this fixture uses. Uh, it doesn't come with them, so they have to be purchased separately. Uh, we got ours with the Chave Freedom Pars. So in order to enable this remote, uh, once again, you come back to your lovely menu button, press it until the screen reads SER up top, hit enter, and then it will either read on or off. Up, down arrows to select the one you want, and then uh, enter to confirm that. Once you have that mode selected, uh, you can use the percentage button and then the up and down on the light to set intensity or any of these preset colors, one through nine, on the remote as well. This mode is a little finicky. It depends on being in view of the unit, range, plenty of other factors. Uh, plus the remote does not come with a fixture, uh, so this isn't usually a very utilized feature. The last feature of this light is Chave's proprietary wireless DMX system called DeFi. The way it works is it's a two-part system uh, with a hub or transmitter, uh, which can either be a USB device from a computer or a Chave board. Uh, and then the second part is the transceiver, which is a small USB device that plugs into the um, port on the back of the fixture. Ours is located at the bottom here. Uh, and what this does is this enables wireless DMX to be sent and received from the hub to any unit that's equipped with the transceiver. Thank you for watching. This concludes our Chave Slimpar Pro H video. If you have any questions, please go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Uh, give us a like, and if you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and hit subscribe. Thanks.